Hello, and welcome back to the Arctic. We're playing as a solo can of friend named Orange. Yesterday, psychoid leaves fell out of the sky, and we've now outfitted a fully functional base. We've sealed off the temperature, we've acquired power, and we've prepared ourselves to do what we've naturally been leading up to this whole time. The Arctic has almost nothing, and, well, obviously you can see we need money to get by. After all, green does make the world go round, and we can't get by bartering forever. But we've spent the last three years researching technologies that now are capable of doing a few things. We have self-defense, for example. We have polar bears now. We have smelters now. We have stoves. Outstanding meals. We're almost completely self-sustaining. But as in real life, you'll spend most of your time trying to get smarter and earning more money. Money. So today we're gonna try to take a few shortcuts. Learning to make a human leather bowler hat seems like a good idea for uh, any, any, really any number of reasons. Or bear skin. So many different types of materials we could try. Really, the better we make Orange with his skills and the better quality clothing items we get, the more money he could potentially make in trades, like with this synth red war veil. And if we have more money, then that means better defenses. Better defenses means more colonists and faster research and so on and so forth. I'd say we're ready to sustain a second life now as well. We have the refrigeration space, the plant growing room. Really, it's not too shabby for living in the Arctic. We have a bulk goods trader, and we use every opportunity that we can to get more steel. Steel is, like, the most important thing. Far better than any other item. Ah, uh, this trader doesn't really have anything, but he does have wood. Well, we'll take it. It's just as good as any other material. And as they say, when you have wood, you have a friend. Coincidentally, when I have wood, I have enough materials to make this lab. Just a good old normal lab. Nothing to see here, move along. And if we just replace this steel with wood instead, oh, we at last have enough materials to finish our lab. Satisfying to watch the squares complete, isn't it? After all, the product is extremely valuable. And you didn't actually think I was gonna grow rice forever, did you? You see, Orange now has level four in plants, so he has some familiarity with plants. And if you have some familiarity, that leaves you off to making smoke leaf plants. As you may know, smoke leaf plants are pretty valuable in RimWorld, and we'll be growing a lot of them because they're worth a lot of money. We'll also be researching psychite refining, and there we go, just plant these plants, good. Good job, Orange. Now, in addition to being such a good friend, he's also a... Farmer. And with 280% growth rate, we should have a lot of money in no time. Got more... people. No, oh, no, he actually belongs to a faction. Now, instead of capturing Wolverine, we're actually going to try to heal him up because it could improve our relation with the Red Snake Gulo. They're our trading partner and we need them. So rub-a-dub-dub, -dub, put that man on the floor. He should be well taken care of in here. But he got shot in the jaw. Jeez. What are they doing to people over there? I'm imagining if the red snake Gulo is actually just a giant red snake that a bunch of people are worshipping. I don't think it's worth asking these questions, though. We'll never get to the bottom of them for sure. Well, in the meantime, we're going to build a single emergency wooden spike trap. Right about there. That ought to do it. So far, Orange has defended himself with only one weapon, and I want to take out some security. Hmm, a refugee. Let's find out what he's like. Hmm, I don't like this. No, he won't do. However, now I'll accept you. I'll accept you into my life. Get it? Into my life? It's another very dark joke. Orange has the plague. We'll use Glitter World Medicine. We really just can't afford for anything bad to happen to him. But he should be fine. He got 101% 10 quality. Gaining immunity really fast. Though this does kind of remind me of the fact that we don't have beds yet, so obviously we'll want beds for the immunity gains. It's only a minor advantage, but it is still an advantage there. And I think Orange will be just fine. Well, we've helped Wolverine exit the map safely. Orange has developed immunity. Now we have better relations with the Red Snake Gulo, and perhaps their merchants will visit us more often. We don't have much space, so I'm going to take out one more storage area. And with this last zone, now we don't have to have anything inside our main room. We can keep it clear and clean. A bit of a pet peeve of mine, but this makes Orange his bedroom slightly better looking. Now it's time to complete research. Orange has experienced a work frenzy. Oh my god, this is incredible. He can do anything he wants now. He'll have all of Psychite refining in one day. That's just one, that is just wonderful. I, I think it might take less than a, Jesus Christ. Work frenzies are really OP. And there it is. Well, let's just keep researching things that will make him rich. Here we are, let's go. 
keep making both of these forever. Yep, as many as you can. There we go. Now, only eight psychoid leaves for Yayo. There we are. Now we have a nice box of it, and we can use this to sell to other factions. We had quite a lot of that stuff fall out of the sky. It's looking a little bit more like Breaking Bad now, but it's worth a lot of money. $21 each? That's not bad, and we'll have a lot of it. My god, he really does work fast at it, too. You know what? Let's help him make this more efficient. Here we are. Much better. Ah, uh, this will be very fast and satisfying from now on. There we are. Even more of the stuff. And these are worth not quite as much as the yayo, but it's still pretty good. Uh, now this is what we've all been waiting for. Look at everything you can do with plants. Very satisfying. Very nice. You know, I didn't think I would end up running a farm in the Arctic, but that's pretty much what this has turned out to become, being raided again. You know, soon I ought to get a prisoner camp up and running. These people aren't that bad anymore. But alas, it wasn't meant to be. Okay, run now. Run. This isn't safe. This isn't safe. There we are. Okay, get inside of the house. And... Right there. There we are. Perfect. I I knew that trap was a good idea. Uh, he got only bruised. Good. Good. Well now, my friends, it's time to formulate a plot. Or end up in jail and shot. In the words of the great poet Eminem, RimWorld is a game about extracting the rocks from the earth, changing them into more valuable rocks, and then blasting off of the planet. We can't do most of that, so we're going to rely on time. Our main resource is just time right here. And this leads me to the conclusion that steel is pretty much renewable value in the Arctic because of our hydroponics basins. We need steel to survive, so let's just go about trying to acquire as much steel as possible. Ooh, forced weather for a gun link. This is very good. We'll take this. It's like Google Glasses. Just like Google Glasses. Oh, that's kind of badass. And all we need to do is put up with rain for a few days. And now I can say things like, you've turned off your targeting computer. Another raid. Still no good. We have a volcanic winter for a guy named Poopy. I'm surprised that they accepted that name into the game, but okay. Uh, oh wow, it turns out he's actually a great colonist. Fast walker and kind. Kind people have a way of just always being fine. As long as, well, we'll see how he deals with Orange's can friendliness. Man, this invader has already got hypothermia. This this one will just be a, an act of mercy, really. Here we are. Come on, you have a targeting computer. There we are now. Okay, now run. Run off a little bit more. I'm pretty sure that you can outrun her. Just keep doing that, Orange. Just keep doing that. Good. There we are. One more. And you are terrible at shooting. You are really bad at this. There we are. And let's see if he's bothered by this. Yes, he is bothered by this. He's... Well, let's see how they got off socially. This is not going to go very well. Well, let's at least give Orange a companion for a few days. If it doesn't work out, we can always just, you know, repurpose him. He has on some nice pants. But they're, uh... Well, Orange at least likes him, and his opinion is getting even better. Though it doesn't help that Orange is also sliding him and insulting him despite the fact that he likes him. They've been talking about horseshoes, canyons, and makeup, chiefs, hostile gunsmiths, and camels. But now he has a minor break risk, so, uh, and we also, uh, there isn't really much meat other than human meat here, so we're going to end this well, before it starts. It was real nice knowing you. We'll take a raid from one of the worst colonists I've ever seen, mortally wound him, and then an attempt to make a top hat. A very special top hat. Now, this should help Orange in social encounters. It's ki kind of Hannibal Lecter, but well, that's what he is. You know, we're owning up to it. He's made crafting level two. Out of the transport pod. I'm sorry, but your 33 days of paralytic abasia requires large amounts of Glitter World medicine. Well, I know another operation that requires a lot of Glitter World medicine. Here we are. And it worked. Everything works out. It just works. It just works. Nope, I'll take that though. Thank you for contributing. Fernand, a visitor named Daiki. Maybe my top hat will help intimidate him. Ah, uh, good, he's willing to buy all of my weird clothing. Great, great. Oh, frab just day. Oh, frab just day. Another raider. Let's encounter him together, shall we? Here we are. Duck, good. <laughs> Duck. Get it? Get, he couldn't duck. Yeah. So he perished. A maddened arctic wolf is slain. A quest. A raid. And they just keep bringing me steel. One. Two. That was a close one. Hmm. A quest of compensated violence. Yes. Oh, that's perfect. Uncle shipping. 
The nomenclature just keeps getting better. They'll take all of this. I wonder if my bowler hat makes me fetch better prices. Even like while he's just talking on the phone with some guy. You know, we don't really need any of this quite as much as the steel. As it turns out, I've severely underestimated the amount of steel we'd need to be here. There we are. Thank you, Uncle Shipping. Nothing suspicious. Nothing suspicious about your name at all. Just kidding. Everything is suspicious about it. I guess we'll just move everything here into the main room as we've been doing. And we'll just put hydroponics basins in really ill-advised locations. There we are. There is one. Now we can begin on the industries that I've always dreamed of. There we are with the smoke leaf. You know, it's great. As a child, I always wanted an ant farm, but I was never allowed to have one because it would have meant a lot of ants in the house. It's like my own little planetarium. We're gonna have to get pretty creative with some of these things now. Although keeping literally everything in one room is becoming a bit of a squeeze and our power lines are running a bit thin. Not to mention that Orange now just has massive food poisoning. He's a terrible cook. Really bad. But hey, nothing beats cool food. And that's what I intend to bring. More forced weather. What is it with Cassandra and just always sending me forced weather? I'm liking Cassandra. She play- she- she's very chill and relaxed. We're practically swimming in steel now. I never thought it would get this good. We have a masterwork great bow. This thing might even be better than my pump shotgun. No, Orange, get all of the smoke leaf leaves out of the rainy thunderstorm. We're depending upon you to make more... Make more smoke leaf for, for money. Can you imagine running into this guy in the middle of the Arctic? Just, you're... You've reached the North Pole, you're exploring, and you meet a gentleman carrying a bunch of smoke leaves. Uh, extremely smart. He's carrying a great bow, and he, he has an all of this, like, fur and human left. It's really, it's just something else. It's something else. And suddenly, a geologist named Perderberk walks by. He's just going for a walk in this thunderstorm in the Arctic. Maybe he's on a pilgrimage. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no, this raider is going to attack him! Well, Jesus Christ. He had a shotgun? Why didn't he use it earlier? All right, that, that may be a free shotgun. Uh, oh, well, I didn't get in trouble for it, at least. I, I did not get in trouble for this. Okay. All right, or... I, I can't really look at him anymore. Just the, the plethora of things wrong with this scene is just... You know, let's... We're getting raided again at the same time. Double raid. Two raiders. Uh, this might... You know, Mm, he's not very good either. All right, well, the rifle gang really doesn't like us, but none of them have rifles. They all have these steel clubs. Very ill-advised to bring me anything made of steel. It, it makes me only more powerful. There we are. <laughs> I've shot him already twice now with the masterwork bow. I'm really liking this great bow. It keeps them much farther off. Now, this guy's named Giggles. We'll go down there and fight him. He has a smoke leaf dependence. No wonder he came here. What are you gonna do? Set fire to everything in a rain st No, don't hit it, though. Oh, that's really not very agreeable at all. Uh, okay. Ooh, he almost got that, too. Good thing we took both of them down. This great bow is fantastic. I'll be sticking with this. Man, he nearly took out my wind turbine. Who's laughing now? You get it? He We're getting raided. Triple raid? It's Karen. It's Karen, she's raiding us. This is really, I've never, I guess this is what Cassandra does when you get far along enough, but you have only one colonist. Triple raid, all right. And they're not even waiting to attack either. This is, clearly this would have been Cassandra trying to destroy me, but her minion Karen will be stopped. There we are now. It's a good thing we happened upon this great bow when we did, otherwise, I might have been a goner. I don't think that shotgun was anywhere near as good. Okay, now she's getting kind of clo- Okay. Well, great, great. Okay, orange. Okay. Well, he got a, a title from the Imperium of Z- Oh, you know, this must have been from a quest that I accepted earlier that- Well, now I'm landed gentry. I, I don't think I'm gonna make him any better than this, though. I'd rather have him just be a freeholder. I don't know what they're doing there at the rifle gang. They send these people out with steel clubs and smoke leaf joints. What amazes me is that just in the middle of all of this is how happy orange is. He is so happy with everything. Like, the more morally absurd our colony gets, the more the more glee he experiences. Now we can probably begin to consider incorporating a second colonist. There's just too much work for one guy. Some repairs to be done here. And then another harvest. Oh god, for Christ's sake. And uh, now the, the raids... We have to let the raids get closer so that we don't spend the whole day hauling them back. It's, uh, it's, it's actually too much work for one man now. There we go. Just come closer, Neeb. 
why would they still send raids? They've sent 50 people one by one and none of them have come back. It mustn't even be like... It mustn't even be just a mission, it's... It's more just a punishment that you're sent to raid this guy. Here we are, thank you, good. And she was hit in... Oh, sh she was hitting the humorous with the great bow, how... That's the world's oldest pun. Oh well, not long for now. Only 41% movement speed, I... I'm pretty confident about this. Like he just goes back in like... I forgot about my rice, I gotta keep planting it. Really a multitasker, Orange is. He has to switch hats depending upon the situation. Just so much to do. So much to do. This man must have the world's longest to-do list. He's like Walter White from Breaking Bad. Except if he lived in the Arctic and had no children or family. <laughs> and there wasn't even any, like, moral questioning. It was just he was constantly... Just adamantly opposed to doing anything good ever. Every single industry that he participates in is extremely profitable and bad. Another raid. I think we're just getting constant raids of one now. We've finally gamed this storyteller. Just into the dust. This is how you make it work with Cassandra. You just never have more than one colonist. And you make your one colonist as overpowered as possible. You outsource all of your resource acquisition to third parties. You become extremely overpowered. And you do a lot of multitasking. And you use natural supplements to feed your economy. There's now actually several ways that we could expand out. I, I'm a little bit overwhelmed by the number of resources I have and the lack of labor. I'm gonna need another colonist soon. Soon and very soon. We'll be looking for somebody else who can just live with Orange. You know, preferably of his same traits. I don't think we'll ever give him up because he's just been so overpowered. Um, but they'll need to get along. They don't need to love each other, but they'll need to get along. I think it's now time to expand out our storage. We'll try replacing everything on the outside with steel in time. So that, uh, you know, anyone who comes in can't just set us on fire. We'll gradually raise our storage. And we'll begin the process of creating an actual specialized base. And somebody fell out of the sky. This one's an ally. We'll try to help. That's more doctoring skill. And you just have to tolerate me playing hoopstone over your body while you heal in bed. Well now, my friends. After what first seemed temporary relocation, this colony has developed into an extremely profitable enterprise. You will spend most of your life trying to earn money, but when eventually you do find those strings you can pull to earn more money... Obviously, every word that comes out of my mouth is just sarcasm. It's been a fun ride here, though, with Orange. I never had a colony that was founded on nothing except for a couple of colonist traits. Oh. Here comes another traitor. I do really love this smoke leaf industry. I accept it. I mean, steel just rains out of the sky. In theory, over time, we could just keep enlarging it, growing more smoke leaf, and then having more steel rain out of the sky. Like Todd once said, it just, it just works. It just works. And everyone is constantly coming in to just join in on the fun. They even give- look, they even bring me more gifts. As it turns out, the entire game is coded in such a way that if you don't have anything, Cassandra will literally just send you people. Uh, and here we are, 6,000 plant skill. That ought to do. Now I'm gonna get an e into an even more profitable industry, psychoid growing. And you can see how this is starting to work out. Though we're running out of space for top hats. And smoke leaf. I guess we'll deconstruct the research bench and replace it with a better one now. And that gives us more wood, too. <laughs> Cold snap. I love it how all of the weather effects are actually good things for the colony now. A cold- great, a cold snap in the middle of the Arctic summer. Actually an advantage for us. And you know what happens to this guy. Really just upset at the horridness of every single colonist in here. But it's more things. We're completing work on the high-tech research bench. And I think I'm just gonna go ahead and massively increase the size of our storage. We don't even have room for all the stuff anymore. The weather has calmed down. We're sitting pretty, uh, is all I could say. We've got all of this good work ahead of us. Plenty of new room for storage. And we have a veritable enterprise at our fingertips now. I'm really optimistic about the future of this colony. And I've never felt so renewed at the middle of a playthrough at any point in time. It's really great to see what Orange has done. Amazing how three traits can really win you the entire game. And look, we've opened up all of the new trees of research to ourselves with this high-tech research bench. 
Of course, many things are still crammed into one room, we'll need to fix that later on, but well, we could start with one or two specialized workshops, but I think we'll wait for another colonist before we start doing that. Our power grid is fairly self-sustaining despite the fact that we have so many different devices too. It really tickles me to see a colony doing so well with just one guy and almost nothing at his disposal. And look at the wealth, the wealth is climbing, it's doubled since we began. Look at all of the one colonist raids as well. Though I think he can handle himself, he needs better weapons, but... Oh, there's plenty of time now. Now there will be plenty of money to do that with, so. I think we'll leave it there for today. That's plenty. As always, thank you to my patrons. You transcend every expectation every day. As always, my name's Ambiguous Amphibian. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.